Hi guys, my name is Trevor Sullivan and welcome back to my channel. If you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please consider hitting that red subscribe button down below and if you click the bell icon next to it, then that will help get you notified anytime that there is a new video on my channel. Now for today's topic, I wanted to talk about PowerShell. Yes, PowerShell once again, that seems to be where I always kind of default to. It's just where my comfort zone is, I suppose. I do learn a lot of other technologies, but I'm not always necessarily at the point where I want to build training content around them. However, what we're going to do in PowerShell today is actually take a look at how to register for events asynchronously. And specifically, we're going to create a timer. And then we're going to basically trigger a task or an, an action or a PowerShell script block that we want to run every time that that timer elapses. So think about maybe wanting to clean up a directory of files every five minutes or something. Uh, if, you, if you see any stale files in there, you just want to wipe them out and let that directory repopulate with some task that's uh, running somewhere else. So let's switch over to our desktop here where I've got uh, Microsoft Visual Studio Code running. If you're not using Visual Studio Code to develop software, regardless of what language you're using, you might use PowerShell, you might use Python, you might use uh, C Sharp or anything like that. Visual Studio Code is a versatile editor for pretty much any of those languages. So definitely recommend checking it out. And if you are using VS Code specifically with PowerShell, if you hit Control Shift X and search the extension marketplace for VS Code, there is an excellent extension here called the PowerShell extension. There's also a preview version of it. So I would recommend uh, installing the preview version personally because that tends to have the latest and greatest features, the latest and greatest bug fixes. It's not perfect, but uh, it's, it's, it's pretty good. So if you're still using the PowerShell ISE or something like that, then I would recommend uh, checking out the PowerShell, I, uh, PowerShell extension for Visual Studio Code. So I'll hit Control B, just close the sidebar there. And what I'll do is just hit Control N, or you can just double click in this empty space to create a new file in VS Code. And if you hit Control K followed by M, you can change over the language mode to PowerShell so that you get syntax highlighting, IntelliSense, and all that kind of stuff. Um, also, I've got the integrated terminal open here, and I think I am running PowerShell Core Edition in here. Yep, PowerShell version 7.1, PS Edition Core. So all good there. So let's go ahead and create a dummy directory for now. So I'll go ahead and just go to my root here and down here in the terminal, and I'll do make dir temp2. And if we cd into temp2, you can see it's an empty directory. You can do dir, ls, gci. They're pretty much all the same thing. Get child item. That's the PowerShell way of listing out items in a directory. And what I'm going to do is just create a couple files. So do set content, path, path, not pass through, uh, test1.txt, value, blah. And then I'll just hit up arrow tab over, or control arrow over rather, and create another file called test2. So now I've got these two text files in this directory here. So now what I want to do is basically clean these up, but I want to do that on a timer. So let's say maybe every 15 seconds, we just go into this folder and just clean it out and let it repopulate. Maybe you're, uh, I don't know, taking screenshots, or maybe you've got some kind of... Um, some kind of task that's just writing you know, inventory data and you wanna make sure that that inventory data is up to date. Whatever the task may be, let's just pretend that we wanna clean this up. So to clean this up is pretty straightforward. We would do get child item dash path c slash temp2 slash star. So if we do F8, sure enough, we can see that this line is going to return us the files in that directory. And because we are specifying the absolute path here, we can go ahead and just go into any directory. So if we're at the root of the C drive, this command obviously still returns the contents of the C temp2 directory. Now, in order to delete those files, we would need to do we'd need to pipe them into the remove item command. And then I don't want to actually remove them yet. I want to just kind of test this out. So I'll use the what if parameter, which uh, in PowerShell is kind of a way to test out what would happen if you were to run a command instead of actually executing the command. So if I hit F8, you can see I get this what if output saying, performing the remove file operation on target test1.txt, test2.txt. So this command, if I just remove the what if parameter, 
will actually do the cleanup operation for me. So now what we need to do is actually set this up to run on a timer. Every, let's say, maybe 15 or 30 seconds, whatever interval you want uh, is totally fine. So what we need to do is to create a timer. And this is all pretty well documented in the .NET Framework documentation. So go check out docs.microsoft.com, I think, docs.msdn.microsoft.com, perhaps. And that will show you all of the right commands to run. I'm actually just going to go ahead and open up a new browser window here. Let me bring that right over here. And let's just head over to Google, and we will search for .NET timers. And in the system.timers.NET namespace, there is a class called timer. So this is what we're going to be using in PowerShell to actually create the timer. So you can see the C-sharp example here. Uh, but we're going to be using PowerShell to instantiate it instead. So normally in C-sharp, you'd have to do a using statement, say using system.timers, and then you can instantiate a timer somewhere down here. So down here, they're doing new system.timers.timer, which is kind of weird because if they're, in, if they're using that namespace, they don't actually need to specify the full namespace to it. But whatever. Um, anyways, we're basically just going to instantiate it. So let's take a look at the constructors here. So you can ins ins instantiate a timer with no parameters, or you can instantiate a timer with a different constructor, a constructor override called with, with that takes a double parameter. And that double is the interval. So it says this constructor sets the interval property, but does not enable the timer. So basically, we're going to construct a timer, but it will not be enabled from the get go. So we actually have to start it explicitly once we are ready. So that's how we instantiate the timer. However, we also need to register for events on the timer so that when the timer elapses or when the timer ticks basically every time, depending on which language you're familiar with, it might be a tick, it might be elapsed, whatever. But in .NET, if we take a look at the events over here on the sidebar, let me move out of the way there really quick. So there's events. And then what we're going to do is take a look at events. And we have disposed. And disposed is a pretty standard .NET event on a lot of different objects because basically when the .NET garbage collection process runs and an object is disposed, you can register for those types of events. Um, actually, when it, yeah, so when the dispose method is called on that object, you can, you can uh, certainly register for that event. That's more of an object lifecycle event, whereas what we're more interested in is specifically the timer event, which is this one right here, elapsed. So basically, every time that the timer ticks, or elapses rather, then we are going to kind of hook into that event and run some PowerShell code to clean up our directory. So to create this object, you can do a couple of different things. If you're on an older version of PowerShell, you might want to do new object dash type name system.timers.timer. And if I hit F8, you can see that creates a new timer object down here in my terminal. However, there is a more kind of modern syntax to do this, uh, which is system.timers.timer. And then there is kind of this implied, it looks like a static method because when you use a double colon after a .NET type, that typically means that you are calling either a static method or you are referencing an enumeration value if the type is a system uh, sorry, a .NET enumeration. But in this case, this timer is a .NET class. And because it has constructors on it, we can simply call this new method on it, uh, which you won't see in the documentation, but this is more of a PowerShell specific way of instantiating an object. So you can see that we have either the new with no parameters, or we have the new with a double interval. So if I pass in, let's say 15,000, this is going to be the value in milliseconds that we want our timer to operate on. Now, in order to actually use the timer, as you saw down here when we called new object, it just spit that object back out to the output of PowerShell, and it's not actually assigning it to a variable. So if I, if I wanted to take this object and call the start method on it to actually trigger the timer to work, I can't do that because I don't have a variable to reference this object. So what we need to do is when we instantiate the timer, assign it to a variable so that we can then reference it later on to manage it. So I'm just going to comment out this line that has our get child item 
command piped into remove item because we don't want that to run right at the moment. So now that we've created this timer object in this timer variable, you'll see we get this little help text saying, hey, the variable timer is assigned but never used. It also shows up here under the problem section, which is useful. So it's actually a PS script analyzer static analysis rule that's telling us that. And um, so basically what we want to do is hook into this timer and grab the elapsed event. So I'm going to hit F8 to define this variable timer in my console here. And now if I do timer and pipe that into get member, get member is an introspection command that allows you to inspect an object to see properties, methods, as well as .NET events that you can hook into. And sure enough, you can see that this timer object has the elapsed event that we saw over in the documentation as well. So what we're going to do is use the PowerShell command called register object event. And this is really powerful because you can basically register for any event on a .NET object by using the register object event command. And then I'm just going to do a PowerShell restart current session because the extension just gets hung up and IntelliSense stops working randomly. Hopefully they'll fix that someday. Um, but now that it's back up and running, I can uh, add in the input object. So this is the object, the .NET object that you want to register for events on. So I'm going to do dollar timer. And then I'm going to specify the event name parameter. And this is the elapsed event that we want to hook into, of course. And then the last parameter we need to specify is dash action. And if I just hit the down arrow here and hover over action, you'll see that the value of the action parameter is going to be a PowerShell script block, also known as an anonymous function in some other languages. And basically, this is just going to be a block of code that runs every time that our timer ticks. Now, for the sake of demonstration, I'm actually going to take this from 15,000 milliseconds down to maybe 3,000 milliseconds, just so it ticks a little bit more quickly here. And what I'm going to do is uncomment this get child item remove item command and move that into the action block here. So basically every time that our timer object elapses every three seconds, 3000 milliseconds, we're going to run this action here. So I'm just going to do a quick ls on c slash temp2 and sure enough those files are still there. So now if I hit f5 to run this script, you'll see that I get back this event registration here. Now the Last step in this process, even though we've registered for the timer elapsed event, we haven't actually started the timer. So if I just inspect that timer variable here, you'll see that enabled is false. And that's because when we instantiated the timer, it doesn't enable it by default. So what you need to do is do timer.start. So there's a method on the timer object called start. And that's over in the .NET documentation as well, I'm sure. Let's head over here, come back to the timer class. And if we go over to methods right here on the right-hand side, I don't know if I'm pointing at this correctly, right here, then that'll take us over to the methods. A lot of these are just kind of standard .NET um, methods that are inherited from other classes. However, if we scroll down, you see there's a start and stop method. So we can basically turn the timer on or stop the timer when we are done. So if we switch back here, I'm just going to hit F8 on this line here. And the timer has now started. So if I wait just a couple of seconds here and then do an LS on C temp2, oh my gosh, our files are gone. So maybe I'll just do set content dash path C temp2, test.txt dash value blah. And then I'll do get child item after that. And if I select this and hit F8 to run just these two lines here, actually I need to do get child item C temp2. There we go. So now you can see that I've got this test.txt file, but if I just hit F8 to run get child item again, that file magically disappears because our timer is running. So this is how you can basically run a task on a timer using your PowerShell. Now, if you wanted to kind of launch this as a service, you could actually use something like the Windows Task Scheduler that basically just runs this PowerShell script. So you could do something like pwsh file, you know, c scripts timer.ps1. If you saved all this into a file called 
timer.ps1, you could actually just put that in there. However, what would actually happen is after the timer started, it would actually exit the script. And so that PowerShell process would die. So what you can do is run this command called wait event. And then if you run wait event dash, take a look at a help for it. Source identifier is the parameter that you want to care about here. And so if you do wait event dash source identifier um, ID that doesn't exist, if I hit F8, this wait event command is going to pause the script execution until it gets an event, some ID that doesn't exist. And because that event is never actually going to be triggered, unless you have some other code that is actually going to send that event to PowerShell, then this event will never actually get triggered and it will just cause your script to pause indefinitely and your timer will still continue to run. So that's all you really have to do to create a PowerShell script that you can then run as a service. And you could configure it to run at startup using a startup event trigger in the Windows task scheduler. So it's kind of a poor man's service scheduler, but it works, right? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, feel free to go ahead and head out to cbtnuggets.com if you would like to check out my training. We actually have a free service as well now, so you can actually sign up for free over at cbtnuggets.com. All you need to do to sign up for a free account is to have a Google account. So that is the only prerequisite. But once you have a free account, you can view a whole bunch of free training about things like desktop support, DevOps, introduction to programming, systems administration. We've got some AWS training content as well. I've even got a free skill here as well called Send Windows Notifications with PowerShell that helps you to send Windows 10 notification toasts. So definitely head over to cbtnuggets.com and sign up for our free training account. Thanks for watching and we will see you next time. Take care.